Well, this is kind of a, um, a little different for me. I uh, knew what I was going to be preaching about six weeks ago today and next week and the week after that. Uh, don't always plan that far ahead, but sometimes God just opens that door where you can do that. And uh, the more I looked at it this week, the more I just was unsure of what God wanted me to share. Mark actually texts me. He doesn't usually do this, but he texts me and said, so what's your scripture going to be? So I immediately started to text him back and tell him what it was, and I just held off, which is not like me. And uh, I, I just kept working on my sermon. And by the way, it's a good sermon. I mean, I like it, you know, um, which was right why I was going to preach it, right? So uh, I came to the office yesterday, and uh, about 5 o'clock, Lynn and I were going to meet a couple for dinner tomorrow night, la tomorrow night, last night, <laughs> past, present, future. We serve an eternal God, right? <laughs> so uh, we, I, I left, and I still was kind of unsure, just didn't quite feel right. So I had a good night. Uh, and came home and usually go to bed a little early on Saturday night, and I just couldn't get a good feeling about it. And I said, well, Lord, it's going to be what it's going to be, you know. You're just going to have to take it and bless it, right? He always has to, because if I preach it, it's not good. But if, he, if he'll preach it, it's worth hearing, right? So um, I just decided, I said, well, if it's not right, I'll just get up early in the morning and I'll change it. So I set my clock for normal, right, for normal time to get up. I said, I should get up earlier. And I said, I'll, I'll get up at this time. And I said, nah, set my clock for normal. Went to bed, told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to go sleep. You're just going to have to deal with this, you know. Just tell me what you want me to preach and all that kind of stuff. Well, I woke up this morning without the alarm, exactly what I said I was going to do. When I said, you know, I ought to get up early and pray about this and think about this and Guess what? That's what I did. I got up, and so I'm not going to preach what I was going to preach. Last week, I preached from 1 John chapter 1, and I preached the four, first four verses. And I don't guess God was wanting me to get through with that. So if you have your Bibles, open them back to 1 John chapter 1. I promise not to preach over an hour and a half. Can't be over an hour and a half because the second service starts in an hour and a half. Amen. I won't do that to you. But if you would, would you stand in honor of reading God's Word? 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the Word of life, the life was manifested. It was made known. It was there evident. That which was hidden was brought forth. That, that life was manifested. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write to you, that your joy may be full. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children... These things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Now, Father, I, I love you, and I, I love your church. I love being with your people. Lord, we, we are brothers and sisters in this relationship with you. And I am so grateful that though you were veiled, you were manifested for us, that we could see you, and our ears could hear you, that we could gaze upon you, our hands could handle you too. Lord, we, we could hear you and we still hear you. We could see you and we still see you. And Lord, we want to see you fresh today. I thank you for your word. Lord, I'm a sinner, but your word is perfect. But I pray, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will communicate your word to us today. Draw us close. Whisper to our hearts. Let us hear from you. And sir, we will give you praise and glory and honor. The gospel is so good. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. We're in a new series I started last week called The Gospel is Good News. And it is good news. That's what the word gospel means. It is the good news of God for us. And it is so wonderful that that which we could not reach, we could not obtain, we could never get there on our own, God made a way. He sent His Son, His only Son, Jesus, to come down to earth to bridge the gap, to pay for our sins so that we could become children of God. In the first chapter there, it says in the third verse, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you may have fellowship with us. That word fellowship, kanania, it means a shared life, a life together. Now, sometimes we have what I call um, Christian words. We hear them so often we forget the meaning. And, and fellowship is one of those. We talk about having fellowship. And for, for years, when I was a kid, I thought fellowship meant eating. We had potlucks. We had covered dishes. We had all these different names, but it meant something good was about to happen, right? And we could sit down together, and we would fellowship together. But I want to tell you, the word fellowship means so much more than that. It's the shared life. And, and that means it's a partnership. Like two business people come together, they have a partnership. That's, it's like a husband and wife. They share the life together. All that I have belongs to Lynn. All that Lynn has belongs to me. It's not mine and it's not hers. It's ours. People have a hard time understanding that. But I bring everything I have to the relationship. She brings everything that she has to the relationship. And we walk together in it. That's what the word fellowship. It's a common life together. But this is not simply a business partner or a spouse. This is a relationship with the Almighty God. And he comes with everything that he is. Everything that he has. Everything that he can do. And he brings it to me. And I bring who I am. My, well, my sins, my faults, my errors, my ways, my thinking, my stubbornness, my spiritual gift of being a smart aleck. All that I have, all that I am, I bring to this. And I give all that I have unto him and all that he has unto me. And it's a shared life together. And it's good. My goodness, it's good. You see, because if I had a relationship with you and I bring this fellowship, I bring this common bond, I bring all that I have, there may be a need that you have that I can't meet. There may be a need that I have that you can't meet. But every need I have, Christ can meet. And every expectation and everything that God wants from me, listen to me now, He created me. To fulfill it. If I feel like I'm under that, I'm really talking down about the creation of God. He is good with me. He is satisfied with me. He loves me. And he wants this relationship with me. So when I gave my heart and life to Christ, I gave my all to him. Get this now. He gave his all to me. 
And we have a common bond. We have a common shared life together. So look in verse 3 again. It says, that which we have seen, we've heard. That's what we're declaring. That you may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, hold on. Here's the kicker. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. Your joy may be full. See, if God comes with everything that is him, everything that is in the nature of God, his love, his peace, his goodness, his kindness, his power, his strength, his wisdom, his knowledge, all that he is, he comes and brings to this relationship. I lack nothing if I join in that kononia, that shared life together. I think one of the greatest illustrations of this is a story Jesus told in Luke 15. We know the story that he told there was that there was a father who had two boys. He was the father. They were his kids. They had a relationship. Come on, listen to me. It doesn't really matter what the kids did. He was always going to be their dad. Whether they were good that day or whether they were bad that day, he was their dad. They were the boys. They were the children. Nothing's going to change that. They might have a fight. They might have a disagreement. As a matter of fact, one of these kids came to the dad and said, I don't want to live this life together. I don't want to be here on the farm. I don't want this shared life together. I want to go my own way. I want to do my own thing. And by the way, would you give me the money that, that, that's coming to me anyway? You let me have it now, and I'll go do my own thing. You just stay here and do what you want. And the dad agreed. Gave him what he had. And he left. And he lived his life his way. And by the way, he thought he had it made. Sin thrills before it kills. He thought he was living the high life. But lit literally what he was doing, he was writing up a tab that he couldn't pay. And the things of this world that you think will satisfy, they never do. Why don't we learn that? Why, why are we so, so hard to, to follow the ways of God and the things of God that he promised us, this common life together, that he promised us would give us joy? Well, that boy thought he had all the joy until he didn't. And he found himself in a place that he never wanted to be, never expected to be, never in his wildest imagination. That's where sin will take you. And he's, un, he's broken. <laughs> he, as a Jew, he was doing things he swore he would never do. And he woke up one day, and he said, you know what? The servants at my dad's ha house have it better than I do. And he said, you know what? I'm going home. I'm going home. He rehearsed his apology. He goes home. And he sees his dad, and his dad runs to meet him. Runs to meet him. The joy of the father was his son that had left, was coming home. And before he could even get the apology out, his dad says, bring the robe. Put it on him. That's my boy. Put the ring on his finger. He's not a slave. He's a child. Put the shoes on his feet. Kill the fatted calf because we're going to have a party tonight because my son who was lost is home. By the way, when the other brother came home, he did not know what had happened yet, but he could hear the sound of joy. Joy, because that broken fellowship had been brought back together, and now they have a common life. Now hear this. When they got the common life together, when they got the fellowship together, the Father said, all that I have is yours. Now 
Matter of fact, he had a conversation with the older son too. And the older son's mad because the older son wanted it his way. He's been out there squandering the money and I've been here working. And you know what the dad said to him? Son, don't you realize all I have is yours too? One had the moment of saying it was better with my dad. The other had been there all along but still lived in bondage. Church, look at me. God does not want you living in bondage. God does not want you chasing the things that will not make you happy. The problem with Christianity is there are too many people who call themselves Christians who have accepted the fact that that joy may be for some, but they'll never get it themselves. That's just not true. God wants you to have joy overflowing. If you're a Christian, where are you going to be? How many of y'all going? Where you, how, do y'all know where you're going to be a hundred years from now? Having the time of my life, like it's never been before, right? Because when I'm there, I will be able to see all the fruits that God has for me. Why can't I see that now? Why can't I see that now? He says in verse 4, he says, These things were right to you, that your joy may be full. Verse 5, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Here's where we need to learn something. There is light, amen, and there is darkness. We're going to choose whether we want to walk in the light, as he is in the light, or we're going to choose to walk in the darkness. Now, darkness is defined, now I'm so smart, it sounds like I'm so clever. Darkness is defined by as the absence of light. You have darkness when there is no light. You know why? Let's say you, you're in darkness, somebody turns on the light, and guess what? The darkness has to go away. Darkness and light cannot abide together. Now, you may have a diminished amount of light, and it may look darker, but there's still light there. And as a matter of fact, you might get adjusted to living in the dimness of the light. Here it is. Christians have settled for the dimness of the light. Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 5, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You put a city up on a hill, all the light that's in the city, everywhere around it, they will be able to see that city on a hill because of the light that's on it. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. You don't take a light and hide the light. That's not what it's for. The light, it says, is to be put on a a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Jesus Christ came to shine brightly in your life. He wants it to be there so not only that you receive the light, but others receive the light. Matter of fact, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But he says here, you are the light of the world because we receive the light of God and we put it up where others can see it too. But he says there's a problem here. Some of you trying to cover it up. Some of you want light and darkness together. It doesn't work. Jesus said in Matthew 5, let your light so shine before men. Why? Why? that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Good works. Hold on, let's go back to 1 John. He says, God is light, in him is no darkness at all. If we say 
that we have fellowship with him, a common life with him. But we're walking in darkness, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. We say we want to, oh, I'm, I'm good, I'm in the light. But literally what we're doing is walking in darkness. That's not good. Look what he says. He says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, a common life together, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, I love this, cleanses us from all sin. Church, before I got saved, I had what we call a sin nature. We were born with a sin nature. A dog barks because that's his nature. He barks, right? That's what dogs do, right? A duck waddles because it's a duck. That's what ducks do. We sin because that's what we were. We had a sinful nature, so that's what we did. Anybody in here sin? All right. When you got saved, did you quit sinning? Here's the thing. The nature of sin was not taken out of you, but the nature of God was put in you. Now you have two natures. You've got two natures. Which one are you going to follow? Now, if you follow the sin nature, you're going to walk in the dimness of the light because you're trying to hide the light. And your joy is going to slip away. But if you will choose to follow the light, follow the truth, follow the nature of God, the ways of God, the love of God, the nurturing of God. I was talking to a couple last night, and we were talking about salvation. I said, when you get, and, and it's like most people, when they, when they get saved, they say, well, but I'll sin again, and I'll feel, no, 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 you, you're going to sin again. I said, when they had children, I said, when you had a child, and it was born, did it know everything it was supposed to do? No. Matter of fact, did you have to take care of it? Did you have to feed it, change it, clean it up, dress it, bathe it? You had to do those things. But as it grew, it began to learn. Right? And you judged it by where it was. You don't judge a three-year-old like it's a 22-year-old. You judge it like a three-year-old. Correct? And when it grows, there's a greater responsibility because it has a greater understanding of it. But it doesn't matter if it's three years old or if it's 22 years old. It's still making choices. And when it makes right choices, man, there is joy. And when it makes bad choices, when it makes bad choices, not so good. And you encourage it. And you teach it. And you love it. We have a relationship, a common life together. But if we choose darkness, that's our choice. He says here, he said, uh, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sins, we deceive ourselves. You're just deceived. We all sin. We all have them. What we do with them, though. He says, if we, verse 9, if we confess our sins. The word confess you may have heard this before. It means to say the same thing. When I look at something in my life and God looks at it differently, which one of us is right? Absolutely. And, and I look at it and, and I say, there's nothing wrong with that. God says, it's wrong. 
Yeah, it's nothing wrong with that. Well, you're making me out a liar. But then we look back, remember the prodigal son? He looked back on it and said, you know, it was, it was right back then. It's not right here. I mean, it was good when I was with my dad, but living in a pig pen, I don't think so. So you know what? I am going to look at my sin the way that you look at my sin. I'm going to look at what I'm doing and call it wrong. So if we confess our sins, if we say the same thing about the things in our life, that he says about it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. By the way, he will never mess up. He will never come up short. He will always be there for you. He will always hear your prayers. He is a God who does not know how to do anything badly. He only knows how to do that which is right and good and just. He is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. I shared with that couple last night. Look, I'm not perfect, but I am forgiven. I've been cleansed. My sins have been separated from me as far as the east is from the west. So when God looks at me, he looks at me at his child. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all. All means all, and that's all all means, but it means all. All unrighteousness. So here, hold on. Christian, you sin. What do you do? Lord, that's wrong. I agree with you, that's wrong. And we begin to repent and confess it in our, in our life. We want to change from it. We want to do an about face. We want to go in the other direction. God says, I'm faithful and just. I'm, I'm there with you. I'm encouraging you. Anything you need, I'm there with you. Come in the light. Come in the light. Walk with me in the light. And your joy may be full. But then he says in chapter 2, verse 1, my little children, he's like he's talking to us like a little child. We, we, we need to see ourselves that way. These things I write to you so that you may not sin. Hold on. Sin. There's a difference between the sin that's singular and the sin that's plural. The sin that's singular, when he talks about it, is the, the whole nature of our sin that he comes in and forgives. You get saved, and your sin nature, sin nature is cleansed. Sins continue to happen, plural. Plural. They're going to happen to all y'all, all day, during the day. Things are going to happen. You're in church and you say, hey, I'll never sin again. I like this. I, my focus is on God. I worship God. I pray to God. I love God. I love every people. Everybody is good. Then you walk out in that world, right? Somebody says something to you and you won't spit on them. Don't y'all act so righteous. You know exactly your heart. He says, and if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's the propitiation. He's the payment. He is the one who can make it happen. The Redeemer, lover of our soul. He's the only one who can cleanse us. We have an advocate. We have an advocate. How many of y'all are guilty of sin? All right, we're going to take you to court. They stand before the judge, and the judge says, are you guilty? You cannot lie when you're standing before the Almighty God. So you know what you say? Guilty. But then you hear this word come up. I object. Who is this? That's my attorney. <laughs> That's my defense attorney. That's my advocate who's going to come on my behalf. He's going to plead my, my case. So Jesus comes up and says, uh, Your Honor, my Father, <laughs> yes, Brian blew it again. Uh, but, but we have come to a deal, he and I have. And I have paid for his sin. All of it. All the sins are made up into that sin debt. I paid the debt for him. It's free and clear. He is now invited to have a common free life together. 
And the judge, the Almighty God, looks at it and says, how was this paid? My blood cleansed him. The father says, that's good enough for me. Innocent. Come on now, listen to me. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Christians lose it. Christians, those who've already asked Jesus Christ to be their personal Savior and Lord, Christians lose it because they think they've got to earn it. And they know that they can't earn it, so there's, they know that there's these two natures, and they say, well, I'm going to do some good, but I'm going to accept some bad. And when you do, you're covering up the light. God wants that light to come out. God wants to bless you. God wants your joy to be full. We're not in heaven yet. We're down here with these two natures. When we get in heaven, that old sin nature will be gone forevermore. Down here we choose. But if you choose him, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's pretty good. Free and clear. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Psalms 30. Weeping may endure for the night. Y'all say it with me. But joy comes in the morning. Psalms 30, verse 5. Aren't you grateful that's there? We may have to go through some hard times down here. But God, just, just wait. Joy's coming. What's your choice? The joy of the Lord? It's there for you if you want it. You want your way? Well, you can follow your way. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, I'm here to tell you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you'll never know joy. But if you do know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, understand you've got an advocate that's cheering you on. He wants your joy to be full. Bring the robe, put on him. Put the ring on his finger, the sandals on his feet. Kill the fatted calf. My son, which was gone, is home. That your joy may be full. Your way or God's way?